The date is New Year's Eve 2004. It's an age of soccer kicks, freak show fights, mismatches, and top-notch commentating. For real? Because Rio Chona, that will be, <laughs> he's fighting somebody from Rio. Thank you very much, sir. I'm sure you're here all week. Pride Shockwave 2004 was an unbelievable event that made some memorable history for the sport. But the focus of this video will be on a fight that was actually on the preliminary card. Rio Chonin's flying scissor heel hook against Anderson Silva would be the last time Anderson got actually beaten before losing to Chris Weidman 20 fights and almost a decade later. Was this victory the result of a moment of brilliance from Chonin? Or was it a fluke submission that took advantage of a future legend before he learned grappling and before he hit his prime? It raises the question, how good was this finish? What is going on everybody? Welcome to the Fight Dialogue. My name is Tim. Today I'm going to be breaking down the flying scissor heel hook finish by Rio Chonan against Anderson Silva. In order to do this, I will judge the overall application of the technique, the quality of the opponent, and every relevant moment of the fight that may have led to the finish. At the end of the video, I'll give a final grade that's based on a scale from 1 to 10. The fight starts, and despite what I seem to remember about it, it was actually a pretty back and forth affair. For some reason, I remember Silva kicking Chonin's ass the whole fight. Don't get me wrong, Anderson definitely had his moments, landing good combinations, getting takedowns, and Chonin's back in the first round. Chonin would reverse the position though and spend the rest of the round in the spider's guard, landing some decent ground and pound here and there. So this definitely wasn't a one-sided fight like I remember it. The second round had a similar vibe, both men landing with heavy shots, and Silva even hit a suplex at one point, what the fuck? Then the second round ended with Chonin getting a takedown from the clinch and riding the rest of the time out in the guard again. Going into the third round, the commentators seemed to think that Chonin was way ahead on the scorecards, presumably based on his control time. But after re-watching this, I thought it was pretty even. In my opinion, Silva was scoring with higher amplitude takedowns and punches. Regardless, you could at least argue that Chonin was winning and therefore did not need a finish, which makes his next few choices particularly interesting. Chonin started landing with some hard leg kicks that got Silva's attention, and it is now that we come to the actual finishing sequence. Chonin shoots for what is known in judo as a Kani Basami, a flying scissor takedown, a potentially dangerous technique that is banned in many grappling tournaments, but is perfectly legal in MMA. Usually when you see this attempted, it's from a clinch position or as a counter to the single leg. But Chonin hits this takedown from a distance with no setup other than a few leg kicks from earlier. It took Silva completely off guard and he gets off balance from it immediately. As soon as Chonin hits the floor, he looked to secure the heel of Silva. This heel hook in particular is called an inside heel hook or an inverted heel hook. In my opinion, it is the nastiest technique in the leg lock family. You can see why as the spider's entire ankle and knee come under an enormous torque and opposing pressure. Anderson screams in pain and tapped as quickly as he could, leaving Rio Chonin victorious. So when it comes to the application of the technique, this was textbook. The entry was as clean as it gets, the off-balancing and subsequent takedown was immediate, and the heel hook finish could not have been any more efficient. Anderson's quick tap is evidence of that. Honestly, you'd be hard pressed to find a flying scissor heel hook this clean in a BJJ Fanatics instructional. The execution was almost hard to believe, especially since Chonin arguably didn't even need a finish, let alone one this stylish. In terms of who the technique was performed on, I'm sure I don't need to tell you that Anderson Silva would go on to be one of the greatest fighters to ever compete in the sport. He didn't quite hit his stride until he came to the UFC, but by this time he was a well-respected journeyman with wins over Carlos Newton, Jeremy Horn, and Lee Murray. But I think the real question here was not how good Silva was as a fighter at this time, but how good he was at grappling. Would he have been able to defend against this attack if it happened in the prime of his career? My answer to this question is no, I do not think so. My theory behind that is, believe it or not, 
he was already a pretty good grappler at the time of this fight. He was training under the Noguera brothers and would receive his black belt from them just one year after this fight. So he was probably a brown belt in BJJ around this time. During the fight against Chonin, we saw him utilize some great offensive and defensive forms of grappling with moderate success, especially if we're talking about the takedowns, back take, and sub attempts. And like I said, he was holding it down in the ground and pound defense category as well. Yes, he did have one loss on his record prior to this via triangle choke. Why don't more people talk about that, by the way? So anyway, his perceived weakness was grappling, but I believe that at the time of this fight with Chonin, he was very close to the peak of his grappling skill level. His real weakness was wrestling specifically and was something that followed him into his prime years. So yes, I do believe Chonin could have hit this heel hook if he had the opportunity to try it on a prime Anderson Silva. And it is that which earns him some bonus points in my mind. Chonin didn't have the most impressive career after this fight, but it was respectable enough and we have to give the man the credit he is due for this finish. So I'm going to give him the total grade of 9.25. So that just about does it for this episode of how good was this finish. If you have any suggestions for what you wanna see next in this series, let me know in the comments, or you could let us know in the suggestions channel on Discord. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and channel members that make this video and all of my other videos possible. I really appreciate the love and support. As always, make sure to like and subscribe and thanks so much for watching. Take care.